the incredibly lifelike Amica robot can instantly connect with anyone. The Amica robot was one of the most talked about gadgets at the Consumer Electronics Show, CES 2022. The lifelike grey-faced robot can talk with you and has human-like facial motions. But people are still curious about what the Amica robot is. Is Amica robot real? What is Amica robot? Well, watch this video till the very end to know more about the development of the most realistic humanoid robot Amica over the years. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and do not forget to press the bell icon to get notified every time we unveil a mystery. That being said, let's begin. The humanoid bot can answer your questions and pose them to you, such as, are you amazed by me? Amica, most realistic humanoid robot ever. It is meant as a study platform for human-robot interaction, the robot says. This robot's primary responsibilities are communication and human engagement. The Amica robot is designed to interact with humans in a human-like manner. Her face features 17 motors, allowing her to make a wide range of facial expressions. She also makes human-like gestures with her hands and arms while speaking. She also has cameras in her eyes, allowing her to view the face of the person speaking to her and latch onto that individual. You may hear Amica's responses through a speaker implanted in a chest. Amica is unable to walk at the moment, but the business hopes to improve its abilities over time so that it can walk one day. Engineered Arts, based in the United Kingdom, developed Amica, the world's most advanced human-shaped robot. The firm went viral last year after posting a video showing Amica's wide range of human-like facial emotions. Elon Musk, the developer of the Tesla bot, responded to the video with a single word, yikes. This incredibly lifelike humanoid robot also stole the show at CES 2022. Amica is real and fantastic, as you can see. You're in luck if you're wondering how to get one. The Engineered Arts website has Amica available for purchase or event rental. Last December, footage of Engineered Arts' most recent creation, Amica, a grey-skinned bot, went viral, showing an android with an exposed metal torso and eerily realistic facial expressions interacting with researchers. Android from the ancient Greek andro for man and ides for form is the accurate term for a human-shaped robot. Amica frowns in one video as an off-screen employee reaches out to touch its nose before smoothly reaching up to stop his arm in a whirl of electric motors. The shock is that a robot would want to construct this border between itself and us, a desire that is, strangely, quite human. When it raised its hand to his arm, I was a little startled. I figured it was just going to snap. Another person says, I realize it's terrifying, but I'm in love with it and want more. Engineered Arts' stock in trade in these emotions, curiosity, terror, and excitement. The company makes money by selling entertainment and educational robots. Academics utilize them for research. Marketing teams use them for publicity stunts. And museums, airports, and shopping malls use them to greet visitors. Anywhere there's a large gathering of people to interact with, Jackson explains. The devices may operate on their own, responding to passers-by with pre-programmed banter. They can also be controlled remotely, with unseen handlers reacting to crowd questions, as shown in this video from CES. Engineered Arts, on the other hand, plans to equip its robots with more advanced chatbot software soon, allowing them to answer queries without the need for human intervention. These robots, however, are more than just entertainers. They are forerunners of the future. The subject of how we react to androids will become more relevant as technology advances and androids grow more realistic. Are fucking and fighting the only two options available to us? Humanity's fascination with androids appears to be a recent phenomenon, although this is far from the case. For thousands of years, we fantasized about artificial humans, from the singing, gold-forged Celedonies of Greek myth to the golem of Jewish tradition, fashioned from clay and animated by sacred words. By contrast, the term robot is a relatively modern invention first appearing in the play R.U.R. or Rossum's Universal Robots in 1920. Machines are used to represent a newly brutalized working class. The term robot derives from the Slavonic robot, which means forced labor, which is forced into mechanical postures and destined to revolt. Automata in Europe were spectacles before they became surrogates for class dread. 
The Giacomats, or Jacks of the Clock, are human figures that strike bells in Europe's largest astronomical clocks and were invented in the medieval era. Others, like the mechanical lion, sent to Francis I in 1515, were elaborate one-offs. The lion, according to the legend, was designed by Leonardo da Vinci and was capable of walking up to the monarch alone before opening its chest to reveal a gift of flowers inside. As the technology of clockwork improved, so did the complexity of the designs. Jacques de Wacanson, an 18th century engineer, put on theatrical arts with automata that could play the flute and tambourine. His most renowned contraption, however, reproduced basic biology. It was a duck that appeared to feed, drink, and excrete, an achievement that earned Wacanson the title of New Prometheus from the philosopher Voltaire. These automata, like the engineered arts robots, elicited a wide spectrum of responses. Some people praised the machine's artificiality, seeing them as proof of humanity's technical progress. Others, on the other hand, claimed that these robots had spiritual powers, saying that they blurred the lines between artificial and biological existence. Theorizing like this was not easy, prompting intellectuals like René Descartes to claim that humans and animals were just another type of advanced machine, though the latter lacked soul or consciousness. According to Beth Singler, a digital anthropologist at the University of Cambridge, the impulse to cast agency and intelligence onto inanimate materials is essentially human. You don't have to go as far with facial traits as Amica has, she tells The Word, before people start bringing animated things into what I call their cosmology of potential beings. There's this sensation that what's around us could be intelligent, and various cultures have different reactions to it. According to Singler, certain traditions, such as Shinto and Buddhism, are more open about the tendency to give souls to objects, but the same tendencies run deep in the West. We like to assume we're immune to it because of the Enlightenment when we were more serious and analytical, she explains. However, I don't believe that. I find the same animistic propensity in people's relationships with animated technical things, which can range from a robot to a Roomba. To put it another way, we still want to believe. Engineered arts is well worst in exploiting such inclinations. It's remarkable the little things you can do to make a machine look sentient, Jackson says. For example, in the early days of the company, they discovered a beneficial trick with speech recognition. His engineers created a program that repeated the last thing the robot heard and switched the words you and I in any speech, rather than building a chatbot that analyzed what people were saying. So you tell the robot, I love you, and it responds, you love me, he explains. And you think to yourself, oh my god, it understands me. But no, all I did was change the order of the two words. From its headquarters in Falmouth, UK, the company investigates these issues. It's an unremarkable setting for such science fiction, a fishing town with a population of little over 20,000 people on the country's southwestern corner in the country of Cornwall. It's a region with a strong sense of place, where residents are pleased to share more in common with their Celtic neighbours in Ireland and France than the rest of England. Jackson was born and raised in Falmouth and says he couldn't fathom staying anywhere else. According to Jackson, the next stage for Amica is a walking version and he shows me a prototype of their metal legs that bend and flex the knees. He claims that his work finally reminds him of nature's grandeur. The more he tries to recreate the human body, the more awe and wonder he feels, and the more he realizes how far human creativity must go to compete. You look at biological systems and then try to replicate them, and you end yourself wondering, and I am not religious, how the hell did this happen? So, what do you think about Amica, the most developed humanoid robot? Tell us in the comments. And if you liked the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And for more such videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel. This is us signing off. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, peace.